Hi, today we're going to talk about exoskeletons. Have you seen the newest exoskeletons that you can buy for less than a thousand dollars? Is this going to be your next birthday gift or Christmas present perhaps? So in this video, I'm going to show you some of these new exoskeletons, but not just the, the civilian ones. I'm also going to look at industrial exoskeletons and some military grade exoskeletons. So which direction are we heading in, in terms of the, the future of exoskeletons? Will they be absolutely pivotal in, in both civilian use, industrial and military use? Or will they actually not really have any relevance? Will it be just like VR headsets have been the last 20 years? Something that's kind of cool on a video, but it doesn't really have any real use case and doesn't re uh, really create value. I think they're pretty good arguments for both, but at the end of the video, uh, I'll try and conclude whether I think exoskeletons will have a key place in, in the future. Imagine still being able to hike into your 80s or even 90s. Picture climbing hills with ease, walking twice as far as you used to, or recovering your stride after injury, all thanks to a lightweight robotic device strapped around your hips. This is the promise of modern consumer exoskeletons. The market is no longer just for military use or, or factory floors. Consumer exoskeletons are now affordable, portable, and practical for everyday uh, people. In 2025, the global market is valued at $534 million, and it's expected to reach nearly $1.9 billion by 2033, growing at 17% per year. This growth is being fueled by aging populations, rising interest in fitness tech, and better robotics and AI. Source. Straits Research 2024. So what's already available? Hypershell X-Series is built for the outdoors. It delivers up to one horsepower of hip assistance, cutting effort by 30% and increasing leg strength by 40%. That can turn a 10 kilometer mountain hike into a comfortable 20 kilometer walk. Prices start around $700 to $99, going up to $1,700 to $99 for the Carbon X with advanced motion tracking and better torque control. Sportsmate 5 is more fitness focused. It supports both assistive and resistive torque, ideal for resistance training, injury recovery, or even just adding a challenge to your walk. It was first released via Kickstarter for $800. $99, with a retail price now near $1,458. DNSYS X1 is perhaps the most mobility-focused of the three. With up to 83 pounds, 38 kilograms, of assistive force and 40 newton meters of torque, it's built to help older users or those with reduced strength walk or climb more confidently. It adapts to your natural gait using AII and is priced between $799 and $1,299. But these devices have limitations too. They're not meant for sprinting or athletic performance beyond 20 kilometers per hour. In fact, most of them disengage at high speed to avoid interfering. They shine in real-world scenarios, reducing fatigue, increasing endurance, and restoring natural motion. So what's realistic by 2030? Expect lighter, smarter exoskeletons uh, with stronger torque, up to 80 to 100 newton meters per joint. Battery life could double, allowing users to walk 30 to 40 kilometers per charge, and intelligent control systems could allow seamless transition between walking, jogging, and climbing. Speeds of 25 to 30 kilometers per hour could be supported intermittently for assisted running. And with mass production scaling, prices could fall to $500 or less for entry-level models. This isn't just about tech, it's about quality of life. Whether you're in your 30s training harder or in your 70s wanting to travel, hike, or simply walk pain-free, 
Exoskeletons are quickly becoming one of the most transformative tools of the decade. The age of superhuman endurance is no longer a dream, it's wearable, and it's already here. Let's clear up a common myth. Modern exoskeletons don't make you much stronger, but they do make you relentless. If you can lift 100 kilos on your own, an exoskeleton like the Guardian XO might help you lift 110 or 120. But where you'd normally do it once or twice, now you can do it 50 times in a row. That's the superpower. Not brute force, but superhuman endurance. This matters in the real world. For soldiers, it means carrying 50 kilos of gear for hours across rough terrain without collapsing from exhaustion. They move faster, stay focused longer, and arrive stronger, not just physically, but mentally. That's a tactical advantage no robot can match. In industrial jobs, it means lifting heavy parts all day without back injuries. Think construction workers, aircraft technicians, shipbuilders, roles where people break down not from one big lift, but from thousands of repetitive ones. Now, here's the part people overlook. Why not just replace them with robots? Because robots are dumb in complex environments. A human in an exoskeleton can climb a ladder react instantly to danger, make judgment calls in unpredictable conditions, switch tasks in seconds. A robot can't adjust when the blueprint changes, the floor gets wet or a teammate yells for help. But a human can, and with an exosuit, they can do it longer, stronger, and safer. No, these suits don't give us super strength, but they give us something just as powerful, the ability to do hard things longer, safer, and smarter without becoming a machine. We stay human, but we work like machines. We often imagine the future of strength as something right out of a Marvel movie, you know, sprinting at insane speeds, lifting cars, aging without slowing down. But honestly, we don't have to guess anymore. We can already see where we're heading just by looking at what's happening with exoskeletons, biotech, and robotics right now. Exoskeletons are already being used, not just in labs, but in factories, rehab centers, even by the military. They don't give you superhero strength, at least not yet, but they give you something maybe even more useful in the real world. Superhuman stamina. Like some of the top models today, they can help a regular person lift 90 kilos over and over again for hours without getting worn out. That's because the suit carries most of the load, up to 90% of it. And while your max strength only goes up a little, like maybe 10 or 20 percent, what changes is how long you can keep going. And that's huge. Now, if we look ahead to the 2040s, uh, maybe the 2050s, things get really interesting. Some projections suggest these suits could let us lift, I don't know, maybe 250 kilos uh, repeatedly without breaking a sweat. And we might even hit running speeds of 40 or 50 kilometers an hour with assistive tech. That's getting close to Olympic level, but for people in their 60s or 70s. And in terms of how they look, yeah, the bulky metal frames might disappear. By 2050, we could see exoskeletons that look more like athletic wear, light, flexible, even woven into your clothes with smart fabrics and soft robotics. Just imagine, you're 85 years old, wearing something that looks like a tracksuit, and you're hiking up a mountain, carrying a backpack, talking with friends. No joint pain, no exhaustion. That's not science fiction. That's where this is going. These suits will probably have AI built in too, predicting how you move and adjusting the support in real time. It's like having a second nervous system watching your every step. But here's the thing, exoskeletons aren't the only path. What if we could upgrade our own bodies instead of strapping machines onto them? That's where biotech comes in. Scientists are already working on ways to boost how our mitochondria work, and that's the part of our cells that gives us energy. If that works, it could literally recharge our bodies and reverse some of the decline that comes with aging. And beyond energy, there's talk about increasing muscle mass, improving recovery, even tweaking our genes to make us stronger and more resilient. So yeah, biological upgrades could mean we don't need a suit to feel powerful. But there are trade-offs. Biology takes time, it's complex, and let's face it, messing with your DNA isn't exactly like putting on a pair of shoes. An exosuit you can turn off. A gene edit, that's a little more permanent. And then of course, there's the third option. 
just building something else to do the work for us. I'm talking about humanoid robots. They're advancing fast. There are already prototypes that can walk, carry loads, respond to commands. By 2040, they could be working side by side with us in, in warehouses, hospitals, maybe even homes. They don't get tired. They don't sleep. They don't complain. But, and this is important, they still struggle with flexibility. Like a robot can follow a script, but it's not great when the environment changes suddenly. A human in an exosuit can make a judgment call, react fast, improvise. A robot, not quite there yet. And that's a big reason why exoskeletons still have an edge in, in real-world work. So if we zoom out a bit, what does the future look like? Honestly, it's not one solution. It's all of them working together. We'll have exosuits giving people physical power, biotech helping us age better and stay strong longer, and robots doing the heavy lifting in jobs that are too dangerous or repetitive for people. In the end, the future of human strength isn't about becoming superheroes. It's about staying human, but pushing the limits of what our bodies and minds can do safely, efficiently, and maybe with a little help from some pretty incredible tech. That's it for this episode about exoskeletons. But if you're curious about what the future might look like, stick around and check out the video on your screen right now. And hey, if you haven't already, don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel grow.